this video we're going to look at how to connect the Smart Buddy booster pump to the Aquatic Life Twist-In RODI system. When you follow the instructions that come with the Smart Buddy booster pump, it talks about how you need to plumb in the lines between the carbon block and the membrane as well as between the membrane and the wastewater. The problem with the twist-in is when it comes mounted onto this bracket, you don't have enough room in here to be able to put an elbow and uh, direct the water to the Smart Buddy booster pump. So what we're going to have to do is remove these heads from this metal bracket and give us some space in here for the plumbing. So to do that, we're just going to remove these screws here and then the heads will come off of the bracket. Once you've removed all the screws, this is going to become more flexible. Now it's going to be easier to remove the tubing. To do so, you want to remove the little blue clips. Once you pop off the, the blue clip, here's the blue clip. Then you can push this down. When you push this in right here, then you can pull the tubing out then you can remove the head. You'll need to remove the head that goes to the membrane as well. So you want to pop off the blue clip and push down on the collar and then you can remove this head as well. So at this point we also want to remove this little piece of tubing here so we're going to have to take this last blue clip out, push in on this collar here and then you can pull the tubing out. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, because we need space between these to connect, we can use this uh, last position bracket. We're just going to need to install the membrane head here, so that way we've got a space between it. So we're going to go ahead and screw this down. Okay, at this point we need to remove this last little piece of tubing. Again, we're just going to remove the blue clip, push in on the collar, and then pull out the tubing. Okay, so now we need to create the space between the two heads. Um, we can go ahead and mount this head onto some screws. So we've just got the screws here. We can put this over it and then just tighten this down here so it doesn't move around on us. So now at first you would think that because each one of these heads comes with the three screw holes that you could just mount it right onto your board. But the problem is once you mount it, it won't allow the head to tilt up. So we have to raise the head and that's why the bracket is raised. So here we've just mounted a little piece of wood, but that'll allow the head to pivot up and down. So you're going to want to secure your last um, DI head to a raised block. Okay, now we're ready to plumb step by step uh, all the tubing to connect the Smart Buddy booster pump to the twist in system. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect our supply line. So this would connect to your water source, your faucet in the house, or under your sink. Then we're going to tip the sediment head up, we're going to remove the blue clip, and then we're going to insert the tubing. So you want to push the tubing in, it's going to stop once, and then you push it a second time and it goes in a little further, and then you can reinstall the blue clip. Step two is going to be connecting the supply line for the water exiting the carbon head and going into the top right of the Smart Buddy booster pump. So you want to insert your tubing until you have the second push. Then you want to install your little blue clip. Then you can plumb it right into that top right. Then you want to install the blue clip on that as well. Step three, we're going to continue the water path. The water is going to come out of the bottom of the Smart Buddy. So you can go ahead and plumb that in and then from here it's going to go into the head of the membrane. We've already got our blue clip off there. We're going to go ahead and plumb that in and reinstall our blue clip. Step four is going to be to remove the flow restrictor which is this guy right here. It's coming out the top of the head for the RO uh, membrane head here. So 
Um, there's two ways to remove it. You can either remove it right here at the elbow or you can remove the elbow and the flow restrictor. So I think it's easier to work on if we just remove the elbow. So you're gonna press down on the, the collar and then you can pull this whole elbow off. At this point, we wanna probably keep the elbow. So we're gonna remove this blue clip. It's very tight. So you just wanna use a screwdriver, pop that clip off. Now you can push down on the collar and remove the flow restrictor. Now we'll be able to reinsert the elbow into the head right here. All right, the reason we remove the flow restrictor is because the Smart Buddy has a flow restrictor built into it, so you do not want to use the one that came with the RO unit. You know, it's very important to remove that. So now at this point, where we've removed the flow restrictor, we're gonna connect our waste tubing to that same elbow, and then we're gonna connect that to the top port of the Smart Buddy pump. We just wanna insert our blue clips Step six is gonna be connecting the waste coming out of the bottom port here in the center, bottom center, from the pump. I'm gonna just put our blue clip on there as well. And then this waste line is gonna go down the drain or into a collection container, but this is your wastewater. All right, step seven is we're gonna connect the, this is the filtered water line here coming out of the head from the RO. So we're gonna insert the tubing into that and we're gonna connect it to the top left on the booster pump. And then we want to just insert, again, our blue clips on both of those connections. So step eight is gonna be connecting our filtered water line coming out of the Smart Buddy booster pump. It's gonna be the bottom left port so we're gonna, from there, run that into the left side of the DI head. So you just wanna insert those, and then again, we're gonna install our blue clips on both of those connections as well. The final connection will be the line that comes out of the other side of the DI cartridge. So you just wanna install your tubing on there. I'll have to remove that blue clip install the tubing, and then we'll reinstall the blue clip. Now this, this tubing line is the line that will go to your collection container, or you could uh, put it onto a float switch and go right into a sump or a holding tank. So we've got a few reminders for you before we go. Uh, anytime you install a new carbon cartridge, even like when it's a brand new system, or if you're just replacing the carbon cartridge, after you put the carbon cartridge in, you're gonna to wanna to remove your membrane and your DI cartridges and install these flush caps. So you just wanna install those and, and then run your system for about five minutes. That's gonna flush any carbon dust that might be in this cartridge out of the system so it doesn't possibly plug up your membrane. From there, you can install your membrane again. And then another reminder would be, anytime you install a new membrane, you wanna leave this flush plug in the deionization head for about a half hour. So run the system for a half hour, let all the water go down the drain, discard any of the filtered water at that point because there is a preservative in this membrane. So you don't wanna use the water for the first 30 minutes. After that point, you can remove the flush cap and reinstall your deionization cartridge. So what's gonna happen if you don't flush this? If you don't flush the preservative, the DI cartridge is gonna absorb all of that uh, preservative and you're gonna find that it turns a tan color and you're gonna have to replace your cartridge very quickly. For more information, visit us at aquaticlife.com.